Colbor. Never heard of this brand before, but I got this Colbor CL60M, the COB light. It's I think this is the daylight only one. They also have a bicolor and RGB. This one, I've seen them go for different prices on Amazon, and I'll put a link below where you can get this model here. Uh, I've seen them as low as $110 for the daylight, and then I've also seen them as high as $150. Um, they could also range uh, lower or higher, depending on the the um, season and how popular these become. Nice bag that it comes in. This one I got I got for a hundred and ten plus tax, so like a hundred under one hundred twenty dollars. So if you find this within, if you find this for under one hundred and fifty, maybe like one thirty, I think that one thirty would be a good price for this. But who knows? It might drop in price. It might increase. And then if you get the bicolor one, I think that one is is between one fifty and one seventy five. And then there's the one hundred model, the one hundred watt model. This is the sixty five watt model. So up here looks like that's the strap, shoulder strap for the bag. This bag is, I can feel cardboard in the lining here. So this bag might not be the most rugged, but at least it comes with a bag. Oh, that's an interesting AC. It looks like it looks like a Apple computer AC wall charger here. Which is great for computers, but not really good for production. Interesting. And it's just one long cable. There's no real, real um, traditional ballast for lights like this. And what's in here? Uh, oh, this is the... Looks like it's the light stand adapter. Reflector. Oh, here is a Bowens mount adapter because this is not a traditional Bowens mount front uh, plate, so you need this adapter to mount any kind of Bowens accessories, which is what I have. And then here is the light itself. Oh, this is small. A unique design compared to other lights that I've seen. This is quite small. There's some buttons to adjust the, what is that? The dimming. You got these wheels here. Oh, these wheels aren't very responsive. But there's no quarter 20s around. It's just these rails. These look like cold shoe rails. I believe they are cold shoe rails. And that's what that adapter is for the, the light stand adapter. And I like that it comes with a lens cap or a, a light cap, COB cap. It's just silicon. I think this feels like silicon. It just pops out like that. Oh, and then there's a protective when you first open it. Heat sink right here on the front. And yeah, that's not a traditional Bowens mount. In fact, there's really no type of mount here. You you looks like you need Does the reflector does he does the reflector even work? You know the reflector doesn't even go on. You need the this is a Bowens mount reflector that's similar to the aperture um designs for the um their 60D. Yeah, you, you need this just for the reflector. So let me put this on here. I think you just push it on with force. Yeah, it just pops in there like that. There were some little ball joints. See these ball mounts, bearings, that, that's how it clicks in. So you, you need that to put on the uh, the hoods. Okay, this is a tight fit, so I'll put this on. And what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm just gonna uh, compare the light output and the basic functionality from not the aperture, but I'm gonna compare this to my favorite 60 watt light, which is the NAN light, the NAN light Forza 60D in this package here. The NAN light has come up with the second version of this, which I'm gonna purchase eventually. But this one I want to compare because I want to uh, replace it. I want to replace these two um, lights. I, I want this to be my replacement. One, because it's a little cheaper, but also the Nanlite. The, my biggest problem with this Nanlite first gen 
is the fan noise. The fan noise is pretty loud. If the CL60M can have better fan noise with the same amount of light output, I'm gonna use this and get rid of this Nanlite or, or just have this Nanlite Forza 660 exclusively with the projector attachment. And, and I'll, I'll include a link of my review of this and the projector attachment to this video. And then when I eventually get the second version of this, which as I understand has a, a quieter fan, I'm gonna use that uh, version two with the projector and just get rid of this one. I'm already starting to see some bad signs here with the construction of, I don't know if they're all of the units or the unit that I bought, there's some issues here. The first one being the reflector. And it is not designed well, or it's not really cut to the same proportions of um, the Bowens mount. I had to use the Amaran Bowens mount, the Aperture Bowens mount, because this wouldn't even fit on here. It, it, it won't fit. These aren't cut short enough. When I was trying to screw it in really tight, this, where it, see, you see there's a line here? There's two pieces and it was turning. So this reflector doesn't even fit on, on the on the light. Some other things that I notice here that are not good is this part right here. These knobs are plastic. They're not metal. This tightener and this tightener. So it feels like they're gonna break and I, I don't feel uh, very sturdy. And all of these pieces, the, the way that this whole light is cut, it doesn't look like it's it's machined very well or it's machined very cheaply. This knob too is not well designed. This knob is a little too high, too close to the light, so it's harder to turn and lock in. The way that the system works, I like that it has a, a, a different type of system as far as the cold shoe adapting, adapting goes. I like that. I think that's sturdy, but this one, this piece right here does not feel like it's going to last very long. It, it feels like some of the p other components of just the engineering of this isn't going to have a long life life shelf life and then every time I when I'm putting this on the light or if I'm screwing anything else on any of the accessories I feel uh, it sounds like the metals are grinding grinding on each other and just scraping all of the all of the metal which is not a good sign I'm in darkness right now I'm at a ISO 125 5.6 f-stop I'm gonna turn this light on Woo! 100%, 5,600, 1% and going up, 100%. Yeah, this is a interesting knob here. The, the knobs, the turning wheel to increase the percentage of the, of the dimness, not built very well. It's quiet though, I can't hear any loud noise fan noise. Here is the NAN light. In the NAN light I can already hear the fan going on. Let's turn the NAN light to 100%. Ooh! The NAN light. I don't have my light meter anymore to measure the light output, but to my eye, this the NAN light still looks brighter than the cold burr. It might be hard to tell on camera, but just, just seeing these lights both on right now, the NAN light 60, Forza 60, looks brighter than the CL60M. And I'm, I'm not even using the stock reflector, so the stock reflector from Aperture, Amaran, is one of the best capacity reflectors for its size. So if I use the stock reflector, that's probably not even as bright. Just a lot of strikes going against the CL60M. I would say if you're if you're looking for your very first light and you only have you want to spend under a hundred hundred um thirty dollars, then go for the Colber CL60M. But right now, just compared to other lights that are on the market, Godox has their model this Nanlite, you can get the Amaran 60D, which is what I recommend, 
or, or the Model 2 version of the Nanlite. They're, all of them are about $100 or $50 off. So the CL60M is, is the cheapest one. I don't think you're saving that much money by getting the, 60, uh, the CL60M just with the quick test that I've done so far and my experience with these other 60 watt lights, 60, 65 watt lights, I would go for other uh, named brands that are have been out for a while, such as Nanlite, Aperture Amaran, and uh, even Godox.